ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد so returning back to the explanation of of usul sunnah of al imam abu abdullah ahmed bin muhammad ibn al ibn hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala who died in the year 241 after the hijra with the explanation of al sheikh al allama ahmed bin yahya al najmi rahimahullah the point that we covered last week was the ru'ya yawm al qiyamah meaning the seeing of allah yawm al qiyamah and that we said that from the foundations of the sunnah is wal imanu bi ru'ya yawm al qiyamah to have iman in the ru'ya or the seeing of allah on the day of resurrection kama ru'ya an an nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam just as it has been narrated from allah's messenger or the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so today we're going to discuss a branch from that issue because we mentioned that actually in the usul of the deen the sahaba radiyallahu anhum and the salaf that they never differed in the foundation what's the foundation here the foundation is the ru'ya and that is the seeing of allah yawm al qiyamah so over that there is no differing however there is some differing concerning whether the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw him in this world whilst he was in this world and did he see him with the eyes or did he see him with the heart also oh, over that and that being a branch of the of the origin because the origin is the seeing of allah over that there is no dispute but there is some dispute over a branch of that and that is whether the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw him before his actual death and whether he saw him with the heart or whether he saw him with the eyes so in this point imam ahmed he said and that's what we're going to discuss today wa anna nabiyya sallallahu alaihi wasallam qad ra'a rabbahu fa innahu ma'thurun an rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sahih wa rawahu qatadatu عن اكرم عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما ورواه الحكم بن ابان عن اكرم عن ابن عباس ورواه علي ابن زيد بن جدعان يوسف بن مهران عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما والحديث عندنا على ظاهره كما جاء عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والكلام فيه بدعة ولكن نؤمن به كما جاء على ظاهره ولا نناذر فيه احد فيه احدا نعم so here imam ahmed he said and that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is now of course he's saying what we believe and we believe that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw his lord since that has been transmitted from allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam authentically it has been reported by qatada from ikrima from ibn abbas and also al hakam bin aban reported it from ikrima from ibn abbas and also ali bin zaid reported it from yusuf bin mihran from ibn abbas and the hadith as far as we are concerned so he mentions that the hadith as far as we are concerned is to be taken 
upon its apparent meaning as it has come from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to indulge in kalam meaning theological rhetoric concerning it is an innovation rather we have faith in it we believe in it we have iman in it as it has come upon its apparent meaning and we do not dispute with anyone regarding it we do not argue or debate with anyone regarding it so in explanation of this of these words of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal then the great scholar Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi rahimahullah he said that the seeing of Allah or the seeing of the Prophet of his Lord in this world has various ahadith related to it and from them is what is related from Masruq and he is Masruq ibn al-Ajda bin Malik al-Hamdani al-Wadi'i his kunya was Abu Aisha and he was al-Kufi from Kufa he is thiqa trustworthy he is a jurist a scholar a worshipper abid and he was alive during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he never met him so he died in the year 62 62 and, and others have said it is 63 after the hijra anyway he mentioned or he narrated from aisha and he said i was with aisha the mother of the believers radiyallahu anha and i was reclining and she said radiyallahu anha and of course we all know aisha and who she is she is aisha bint abi bakr as-siddiq she is the mother of the believers and she is the most knowledgeable of all of the women without exception and she was the best of the wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam meaning that the most beloved to him and the most virtuous of them after khadija radiyallahu anha and she died in the year 50 uh, 57 after the hijra radiyallahu anha so anyway masruq he said i was with aisha the mother of the believers and i was reclining and she said to me o oh, aba aisha as that was his kunya also she said there are three matters and whomsoever speaks with them has invented a great lie upon allah so he said i was reclining and when she said that i sat up when she said that i sat up meaning that she said ya aba aisha that there are three and whomsoever there are three things about whomsoever speaks about them then he has invented a lie against allah so she said whomsoever claims that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw his lord has invented a lie upon allah so he said at that point i was reclining when she said that i sat up and i said oh mother of the believers do not rush me did allah not say in the quran wa laqad ra'ahu bil ufuq al mubin Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not say in the Quran indeed the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him in the clear horizon and did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not say in his book wa laqad ra'ahu nazlatan ukhra and he certainly saw him in another descent She said I was the first of this ummah to ask Allah's messenger about this so he said indeed 
it refers to Jibreel. Because I did not see him in the form that he was created upon, except on these two occasions. I saw him descending from the sky to the earth, filling what was between them due to the immensity of his creation. In another narration, he said, O mother of the O, o mother of the believers, did the Prophet wasallam see his Lord? So she responded, What you have said makes my hair stand on end. Know that if someone tells you one of the following three things, then he has lied. Whoever tells you that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw his Lord has lied. Then she recited the statement of Allah La tudrikuhu al-absar wa huwa yudriku al-absar wa huwa al-latif al-khabir No vision can grasp him but he grasps all vision and he is al-latif the most subtle and kind and he is Al-Khabir, the well acquainted with all things. And she recited, وَمَا كَانَ لِبَشْرٍ أَنْ يُكَلِّمَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا وَحْيًا أَوْ مِنْ وَرَاءِ hijab. It is not for any human that Allah should speak to him unless it is revelation or from behind a veil. And then she continued, And whoever tells you that the Prophet knows what is going to happen tomorrow, then he has lied. And then she recited, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَا مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدًا That indeed no person knows what he will earn tomorrow. From Surah Luqman, Ayah number 34. And in a narration, she recited, قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْعَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَمَا, يشعر وما يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ And then she recited, None in the heavens and the earth knows the unseen except for Allah, and they do not perceive when they will be resurrected. Then she said, And whoever tells you, that he concealed anything from Allah's orders has lied. And then she recited the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya ayyuhar rasul ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbika wa in lam yaf'al fama ballagta risalatahu O Messenger convey that which has been sent down to you from your Lord. And if you do not, then you have not conveyed his message. Surat, Ma, Surat Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 67. Then she added, But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Jibreel in his true form on two occasions. This hadith being reported by Bukhari and Muslim. There is another hadith from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw Jibreel with his 600 wings. And in the hadith of Abu Dhar and he is Abu Dhar Jundub bin Janada one of the earliest converts to Islam in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He is from the, from the Sabiqoon al-Awwaloon. And he was a figurehead amongst the Sahaba radiallahu anhum in knowledge, in zuhud, having nothing to do with the worldly affairs, and in jihad, and in truthfulness. And this companion radiallahu anhu, he died in the year 32 after the hijra. That he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the question. He said to him, Did you see your Lord? So he asked him the question. Did you see? O Messenger of Allah, did you see your Lord? 
So he said, How could I? He said, How could I? Light is what I saw. So he said, Noorun. Noorun anna ara. He said, It is light. That is what I saw. And in a narration, he said, Noorun inni ara. He said, Indeed, it is light that I saw. This narration being reported by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. And they, they occurs. Naam, they occurs in a narration also. Ra'aytu nuran. I saw light. So all of these narrations reported by Imam Muslim in Kitabul Iman, Kitabul Iman, under the chapter heading, where he said, Ra'aytu nuran, that it is light that I saw, that the Prophet ﷺ said, it is light that I saw. So these hadith or these two narrations and and in whatever else that we have just mentioned is proof for the one who states that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not see his lord on the night of ascension on the night of the isra and miraj which is celebrated by some of the people of innovation because they think that it is a night of celebration or a night of special occasion even though in reality its true date is not known anyway we know that the prophet sallam was taken on the night journey of the ascension but as for exactly when that night is and which month and which day then that is not known so some of the people wrongfully and by way of innovating into the religion that they take it as a night of celebration or special occasion and that is not permissible and it is an innovation as for that which has been reported by Imam Tirmidhi from Mujalid and he is Mujalid bin Sa'id bin Umair al-Hamdani and he was not considered a strong in uh, considered strong in narrating hadith and he died in the year 144 after the Hijrah he narrated from a Sha'bi and a Sha'bi he is Amir bin Sharahil a Sha'bi Kunya Abu Amr Thiqa trustworthy well known and an Imam and a scholar Faqih Makhul said about him I have not met anyone with better understanding than him and he died in the year 100 after the Hijrah at the age of 80 so a Sha'bi said that Ka'ab and Ka'ab is Bin Mati Al Humayri Abu Ishaq well known as Ka'ab Al Ahbar trustworthy thiqa. he was alive during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but never met him known as Mukhadram the person who was alive at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but never met him he was from Ahlul Yemen and he lived in Sham and died during the Khilafah of Uthman and he was over a hundred years old when he died Bukhari does not narrate from him but Muslim narrated one narration from him to Abu Huraira anyway this Ka'ab Rahimahullah, he met Abdullah ibn Abbas in Arafa and he asked him a question and Ka'ab from the answer uh, he heard the answer in which he said indeed Allah divided his seeing and his speaking between Muhammad and Musa between mean the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Prophet Musa alayhi salam so he spoke to Musa twice and Muhammad saw him twice. This narration was declared to be weak by Shaykh Al-Albani rahimahullahu ta'ala. Shaykh Al-Albani, the narration is reported by Imam Tirmidhi as we mentioned in Kitab al-Tafsir. And Shaykh Al-Albani said that the narration, it is da'if in its chain. Regardless, this narration is mawquf to Ibn Abbas meaning it is it is ascribed as a saying of Abdullah Ibn Abbas and in some narrations it is stated that Abdullah Ibn Abbas ascribed this ascribed the fact that the Prophet ﷺ saw Allah meaning that he saw him with his heart and that is indicated by Imam Muslim in his Sahih in Kitabul Iman 
when he the chapter heading where he mentioned the meaning of the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal where Allah said وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةً أُخْرَى that he saw him certainly in another descent from uh, from the from the root of transmission or isnad of Abu Bakr Ibn Abi Shayba and Abu Sa'id Al-Ashaj both of them from Waqi' from A'mash Al-A'mash from Ziyad bin Hussein Abi uh, who is Abu Jahma from Abu Aliya from Abdullah ibn Abbas where it was it was recited meaning to Abdullah ibn Abbas or Abdullah ibn Abbas recited ma kadhab al fu'adu ma ra'a and likewise or the, the, the meaning of that statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the heart did not lie about what it saw and then he recited the statement of Allah wa laqad ra'ahu nazlatan ukhra and he saw him or he certainly saw him on another descent Abdullah ibn Abbas he said ra'ahu bi fu'adihi marratayn that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw his lord with his heart on two occasions so here Abdullah ibn Abbas affirms that the seeing of Allah was not with the eyes of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but rather it was with the heart that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was alive and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah stated in his fatawa he said then as for the seeing of Allah then it is established from Abdullah ibn Abbas that he said Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw his Lord with his heart on two occasions. So that was the saying of Abdullah ibn Abbas. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she opposed the seeing of Allah in this world. So from them are those, meaning the scholars, who gather between these two narrations and they say, Aisha opposed the seeing with the eyes. And Abdullah ibn Abbas affirmed the seeing with the heart. And in this, therefore, there is no contradiction between the two. As for the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas, as for the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas, then it is either unrestricted in its wording or restricted in the wording. Unrestricted, meaning that it is just said that he saw Allah. Or it is restricted to the seeing of the heart. So on an occasion he said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw his Lord. And on an occasion he said, Muhammad saw him. So there is no clear cut wording that is established stating that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw his Lord with his eyes whilst he was alive in this world. And likewise from Imam Ahmed, on an occasion, Imam Ahmed merely states that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw his Lord in an unrestricted statement. And on an occasion, he said, meaning Imam Ahmed, that the Prophet saw him with his heart. And there is not anyone who said that he heard Imam Ahmed say he saw him with his eyes. However, a group from the companions of Imam Ahmed only heard him say only heard him say that he, only heard him say the unrestricted statement i.e. that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw his Lord so as for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam seeing his Lord then in that there is some tafsil did he see him with his eyes or did he see him with his heart so, they, so some of the companions of Imam Ahmed, they understood from that that he saw him with his eyes. Just as some who heard Abdullah ibn Abbas saying the same thing unrestrictedly, that he saw his Lord. So they understood from that that the seeing was with his eyes. However, 
there is not any proof that shows that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saw his Lord with his eyes. And it is not established upon any of the companions, nor in the book, nor in the sunnah, that he saw him with his eyes. Rather, the authentic narrations negate the seeing in this world with the eyes, as in the hadith in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, who said, I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did you see your Lord? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Nurun anna ara. He said, How could I have? Light is what I saw. And this is from, and I and we refer uh, the listener back to the Fatah of Shaykh Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, volume 6, page 509. So Shaykh Ahmad al Najmi, he said that the meaning of anna arahu. How could I see him? How could I see him? This is a statement of elimination of one in replacement of another. So the seeing of light was in replacement for seeing his Lord. So for these reasons there occurred a differing in the issue of whether the Prophet wasallam saw his Lord on the night of Isra. And success lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is because, my brothers and sisters, because of the fact that Ahlul Sunnah, that they affirm the ru'ya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al qiyamah. Over that, the seeing of Allah is not denied. And as we mentioned last week, that is the seeing with the eyes in one's head. That the believers will see their Lord yawm al qiyamah. However, the differing is, did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam see his Lord or did he not see him? Over that, they differed. Did he see him with his eyes or did, they, or did he see him with his heart? And that which is apparent and correct and Allah knows best from the narrations that we mentioned, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not see Allah with his eyes whilst he was alive, but rather he saw him with his heart. And there's also the hadith, the well-known hadith of the Dajjal. When the Dajjal comes and he claims in front of the people that he is their Lord. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say, he, he is not your Lord, for you will not see your Lord until after death. So that is another proof that actually, whilst a person is alive, then he will not see his Lord, meaning he will not see his Lord with the eyes in his head see so with the with the eyes the naked eyes a person cannot see his lord whilst he is alive in this world but as for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then it is established and allah knows best that he saw him with his heart on two occasions and that is established from abdullah ibn abbas and allah knows best as shaykh al-islam ibn taymi has mentioned and as the narration from sahih muslim also affirms that abdullah ibn abbas he said radiyallahu anhuma that he saw him bi fu'adihi marratain that he saw him with his heart on two occasions and that is what is most correct concerning this issue and that establishes for us the fact that actually ahlul sunnah ahlul hadith the salafiyun past and present that they do not differ in the usul of the deen they do not differ in the aqidah they do not differ in the foundations and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum did not differ on whomsoever claims that the Sahaba they differed, then that person has invented a lie against the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentioned in Minhaj al-Sunnah that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum never differed in the usul and the qawaid of the deen. But rather the differing of the Sahaba was in some branches that, that, are, uh, that come off or well, they branch off from the usul and the aqidah, like this example that we have mentioned. So did the sahaba differ in the ru'ya? No, they did not differ in the ru'ya. So what did they differ in? Whether the Prophet ﷺ saw Allah whilst he was alive. After death, then they did not differ. And that is the point of aqidah. And that is what, what, what is found in the books of aqidah and the books of usul, that the believers will see their Lord, yawm al qiyamah. So the ru'ya is not denied, except by a wretched, filthy jahmi. وجزاكم الله خيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته